Hi, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to address one of the more common failure points on the Sidewinder X1 3D printer. That happens to be the ribbon cable connection going to the breakout board on the extruder assembly. About a year into having my X1, I fell victim to this failure. I managed to catch it before it got really bad, but I've heard some horror stories where people weren't so lucky. I did what most people do and just go on Amazon, order a new board, install it, and get the printer back up and running. But I knew I would experience this failure again and I may not be so lucky this time. So I wanted a more permanent solution. I looked around online and I couldn't really find what I wanted. So I decided to come up with something myself. I designed a custom PCB and assembled it with higher quality and more reliable components. I'm gonna show you how I put this together and talk about the components that I chose and why I chose them. Along the way, I'm going to explain why this failure happens, dispel some myths about the ribbon cables, and give some advice and input on some of the common remedies that I've found that people have tried and suggested. Here's the PCB and the new components. For the PCB, I opted to replace the LED connector for a dedicated connector for a BL Touch. This is similar to the Wagster mod, but instead of having to splice the ground wires on the BL Touch loom, the grounds are spliced together in the PCB. This gives the BL Touch a much easier and cleaner installation. For the ribbon cable connector and the heater cartridge, I went with a known high quality name brand called Amphenol. The ribbon cable connector is a locking type and for the heater cartridge connector, I went with a pluggable terminal with the screw type connection you commonly find on the main boards where connections need to handle higher current loads. While the stock VH-2A connector can technically handle the current load, the connection tends to get loose over time due to the vibrations produced by the movement of the extruder assembly. This terminal connector has a much tighter connection and is rated for up to 10 amps. The remainder of the connectors are just the JST type and basic pin terminals, the ones you commonly find in kits from Amazon or eBay. I will leave links below for all the parts that I use for this build. If you are curious, I designed this PCB using a piece of software called EasyEDA. It's free and it's simple to learn. Now it's time to get the soldering iron out and put this together. And here is the finished product. Let's get this installed on the printer and start a test print. One thing I did need to do was to cut off the old connector and crimp on these ferrules, then install the corresponding half of the new connector. The rest of the installation goes as it normally would until we get to the ribbon cable connector. These locking type connectors have a tab that you need to pull out, then the ribbon cable can be inserted. You'll feel a small amount of resistance, but it will be easy to tell when the cable is fully seated. Then just press the tab back in evenly, 
and that ribbon cable is locked in there nice and tight. I will not be installing the BL Touch just yet. That's going to happen in a later video where I show how to upgrade the main board in this printer. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. And here it is, my custom PCB running on the printer. Common talking points about the ribbon cables is that they're not capable of carrying the current that this printer requires to run right. This is completely false. Each trace in the ribbon cable is rated for a maximum of one amp of current flow. Well, the electrical connection for the heater cartridge is spread across eight of those traces, four for the negative and four for the positive. And the heater cartridge will draw a maximum of 2.7 amps. So there's plenty of headroom there. As for the extruder stepper motor, it's limited to 800 milliamps in the firmware. So there's no issue with that as well. The reason why this failure happens is because the connector on a stock breakout board holds a ribbon cable with just some spring-loaded contacts. With the amount of movement and jerking around and vibration this thing gets, that connection will loosen over time, causing a point of high resistance, which will generate a lot of heat in the connector, which causes it to melt. On top of that, these connectors and cables are only designed for a finite amount of mating cycles, between 10 and 15, depending on the manufacturer. So if you've had your hot end apart a few times, you've already compromised the integrity of that connection. There are some solutions that people have come up with to help alleviate the issue. One of the more popular ones is to print a strain relief that actually mechanically clamps onto the cable and holds it in place. Another one that I've seen thrown around quite a few times is to use dielectric grease to increase the conductivity between the connections. Well, congratulations, you've just lubricated a connector that depends on friction to hold it together. I wouldn't recommend it for this application. Really, dielectric grease doesn't increase conductivity between two points. It's mainly designed for high current applications to keep moisture out of the connection and prevent corrosion. And that is all. I hope you enjoyed this. And I imagine a few of you might be asking yourselves, am I going to make a bunch of these to sell off? Well, that's a big fat maybe. If I get enough people asking for them, I'll probably do a small run, 20 or 30 of them or so. But once again, that depends on how much attention it gets. So we'll see. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And as always, thanks for watching and happy 3D printing.